What is it about Skull and Bones that strikes both fear and silence in all but the most casual observer? Is it the death-obsessed emblems surrounding so much of their fantastic lore, including rumors of harboring the mortal remains of some of America's most beloved heroes? Is it the tight-lipped secrecy that surrounds the group so much that questioning rumors of affiliation have resulted in more than a handful of job firings? Or is it a historical traceable connection between its members and the upper echelons of international power, a power that has grafted itself by dint of affiliation to the key leadership positions in the very same groups we've been covering in this series. After all, it's just a harmless college fraternity, right? Isn't it? All good fun and games, if slightly more morbid than most. Well, on today's show, you might find yourself grateful that binge drinking and a sliding GPA might be the biggest worries about your son while he's away in school. Hello, my conspiracy nuts, and you know who you are. This is Byron Dice, and you're listening to Let's Get to the Bottom of That Podcast, probably the best show on the internet, where each week I'm joined by Mike and Jason, and we cover a topic that's been left out in the public square, unattended and covered with questions from the official story. Today is the seventh installment in our series, Secret Societies, it's episode 23, Skull and Bones. So my critical free thinkers, get your tin foil hats back on, sit back and relax, and let's get to the bottom of that. Ice Man Enterprises exclusively presents a talk show that will get to the bottom of things once and for all. And now here's your host for Let's Get to the Bottom of That, Three Weirdos on a Mic. Woo! That was a rough intro, boys. Oh, you did a great job. I'm trying. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, man, that sounds good. Though. It's skull and bones time. Welcome into another episode. Let's get to the bottom of that. We just dropped the Knights Templar, which was very interesting. It was a good episode. That was probably our longest episode. It was went for it? an hour and seventeen minutes or something like oh, that. Wow. Okay. It was very long. We went into some rabbit holes. Which is typically what we're going to do on this show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of rabbit holes, let's go ahead and tell the audience this. Uh, at the end of our series, when we're done with the Secret Society, we're going to have a show called Down the Rabbit Hole. Okay? Now, typically, this is going to be the last uh, show of each month that we do. And anytime you see the title Down the Rabbit Hole, just know that it's not going to be focused on any one topic. Right, right. It's going to be random thoughts from everybody's brain on the show. Yeah. We're going to talk about current events of the day, what's going on, what's weird. It'll still be get to the bottom of that esh esque. It'll for, still be that sure. style show, but it just will not be a a topic driven show like you're normally used to. It'll kind of give us a break and kind of a kind of give us a breather of what's going on because we're like 22 episodes, 23 in. And uh, we just need to talk about some stuff that we've talked about already. Right, right. Because we really don't get a chance to do that right here on the mic. We usually talk about, you know, Templar, Skull and Bones, you know, Moon Landing, whatever. Like you said, it could be current events, you know, anything like that. Oh, sure, like the balloons. Yeah, yeah, UFO balloons. Yeah, it'll be more freeform. It'll be definitely freeform. It'll be more casual. It'll be nice, I think. I think, yeah, it'll give us us some breathing room. And maybe uh, uh, maybe you guys like that. And, uh, you know, you can give us um, some feedback. Yeah. Yeah, All right, dude. How are y'all guys doing? Good. good did y'all dude. like the Templars? I did. I've liked every episode so far. The Secret Society. I'll tell you what. We, two of them are in the top ten right now. Secret Society. The Masons. The Masons. Uh-huh. Yep. And the, um, what is it? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bilderberg? It no, may be. Was it? Was it I don't Bilderberg? know. I think it is. Or Illuminati? Talk about it may be. Talk amongst yourselves. Let me find that it out It could real be the quick. Illuminati. What's, what has been your guys' favorite of the series so far? Bilderberg. I, I Bilderberg? Have, you like Bilderberg? Okay. I, I just, they're, it was different from your standard secret society yeah. because it's out in the open. They had a website. Yeah. They have a website. What it is the about? Bilderberg. Is it, so it's okay. the Freemasons of Bilderberg. Awesome. There, there's two of the two of the secret societies that we've done in the yeah. top ten. Pretty soon, this whole list. I was just talking about Bilderberg today with uh, somebody, and I was like, "If you don't believe me, go look at their website. They'll yeah, they tell you what they talk about." Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and the, so my favorite has been 
what we just w- released was the Templars. Oh, okay. That For some reason, favorite. yeah, I don't know. I just got in. It really intrigued me how they just took them down in 1307. Yeah. And they reemerged somewhere else and just did it all again. Yes. That was really intriguing to me. Hell yes. Hydra. Yep. Hell, Hell Hydra. Dude, for me, I'm like torn between two episodes. I really liked our Illuminati episode. I thought that was a lot of fun. The, just, the adrenochrome, adrenochrome. Yeah. Oh, dude. Adrenochrome. Just a lot of fun stuff that we talked about in that episode. You I love that one. Yeah. And I also, unexpectedly, I really liked uh, our Jesuit episode. When, you know what? That's up there, too. That's yeah. When one, I yeah. saw that on the docket, I was like, okay, this is going to be a topic where, like, you know, we might struggle to fill out the whole hour. But... I thought it was fantastic, and I learned a lot when I was researching about that. Absolutely, yeah, I yeah, didn't I know. know how deep the rabbit hole went. Yeah. yeah, and I found you know found out they were smuggling you know Nazis over here, and that, that was just weird. Yeah, and it was uh, it was very intriguing. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Well, uh, don't forget, guys. Uh, there's a question of the day uh, on the Spotify mobile app. There'll be a question, and there'll be a poll. Uh, make sure if you're listening to this on the Spotify, you scroll all the way down when you're listening to the episode and you can see the Q&A, uh, the question of the day, and a poll that we're taking. Um, not sure what today's question, by the end of the episode, I'm sure we'll come up with a question yeah, of the day for you, for you guys in a poll. Today we're talking about Skull and Bones, which I think probably everybody has, has heard of this society. Um, they've actually done a movie, yeah, Skull and Bones, or is it just called uh, Skull? I can't remember. Is it a documentary that you're talking about? No, it's about? actual, actually a, a full-fledged movie. Right? Oh, okay. I know they did... Uh, there's that one De Niro movie called uh, The Good Shepherd. Have you seen that or heard of that? I have. I haven't. Yeah, dude. They talk about uh, Skull and Bones in there. And I, th- I think like what they go over is some of the stuff that came out during the uh, church committee in the 70s. Some of the stuff about the Skull and Bones community was released. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh, it's called The Skulls. Skulls. Oh, okay. It was directed by Rob Cohen. Oh, it's got Paul comedy. Walker in it. Paul Walker. Paul Walker. He's, okay. Yeah, Joshua. And it's about Skull and Bones? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Your 2000? The Skulls. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 2000 American Thriller by Rob Cohen, uh, starring Joshua Jackson. Paul Jackson? Paul Walker. It's a plot based on the conspiracy theory surrounding Yale's Skull and Bones Student Society. I think, actually, I think I have seen that. I have seen that. It was pretty... It, it's very, it's oh, yeah, very the dude dark. Dude from Dawson's Creek. That's who it yes. is. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's very dark. Yeah. Okay. I've seen that. Do you remember like what they showed as? Dude, like- I, I don't. It's okay. been so long ago. I should have watched this movie before we did this show. Yeah. So it- let's watch it right now while we're on the show, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do Live some commentary. commentary. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Because I'm sure it gets into like what some of the initiation process is. Because. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking about that today. At least I have some stuff in my notes about it. I can't wait. It's gross. It uh, yeah, totally gross. Yeah. I don't understand why why they're doing this stuff. Um, well, let's just get into it. Um, I'll I'll just start off with this: the origins. Technically, the Skull and Bone Society is not an undergraduate fraternity. Membership is via invitation only. I didn't know this, and it's only extends to 15 inductees a year. Um, for that, the soul solely within their junior year. And furthermore, both current and historical membership rosters are completely private. Hmm. That it's, that's weird. You can find the, um, the it's private, the but I think you can find that's weird. Yeah. There's a, a publication that Yale university, I can't remember what their school newspaper is called, but they, now they publish the names of everybody who gets tapped. Okay. So it was founded in 1832 as the order of skull and bones, yep, or bones as it, as it's informally referred to by Yale students, uh, William Huntington Russell and a future U.S. Secretary of War and a Freemason, Alfonso Uh-oh. Taft, Freemason. Here we go. Um, it is uncertain the purpose behind the design of the group. Allegedly, it was after a dispute over that year's Phi Beta Kappa awards. Although it seems to be more likely, it was established. Much like how fraternities are established in today's world. So okay, what do you, what do you got? What is Mike, that? What do you got, Mike? Okay, so skull and we're bones. going to Yale. I'm I, I'm in my junior year. Yeah, so like you said, what happens is you're in your junior year, and then there is a process. They call it tapping. 
where um, that sounds the seniors that are about to graduate, the senior members of Skull and Bones that are about to graduate, tap 15 college juniors that are headed into their okay. senior year. So we got 15. So we're on campus, Jason, and we're hoping. Is there something I have to do personally to maybe want to get that tap? I, I think a lot of people want to get that tap, and they go for people who are outstanding right. in some area that they know that's going to be high in society. Yeah. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta schmooze. Yeah. I gotta make myself very sociable. Yeah. And uh, maybe I come from a powerful family. For sure. Yeah. Possibly. That would help. Okay. Yep. My parents are dead, so I'd be out. Yeah. So. A lot of people at Yale, though, they do come from money. That's no secret. Um, so that's one indicator. Um, and then just being outstanding in something, that's a way to stick out. I heard historically they usually tap the captain of the swim team and um, one other sports team the captain. Swim Why, team? Yeah, the swim Why the team? swim? It means a lot to the Ivy League people, I guess. I don't know. Beta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They. D- <laughs> yeah. Um. Wait a minute. What if... What if what if dude's in there? What's his name? Brett Kavanaugh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him too. Which one? The guy that just won. He's a transgender. He's on the swim. Oh. Is that, is that Yale? I don't know what they call oh, them. What's oh. that guy? He just he just, he just just won. Leah Thomas Thank is who you. you're talking Thank about, Thank you. Right? Yeah. Is he going to get tapped? No. I is Leah not. Thomas a Yale? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't think so. No. no. Beta. Beta. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, powerful family, come from money, sociable. You got to be on the skills. Um, I wonder, did any of the Bidens go to Yale? Because I know we got some stories of the Bushes. I don't think Biden went to college, did he? Uh, Was he smart enough? He can't even talk. That's a good question. He, he went to college somewhere, I think. Hey, name Andro, <laughs> Ambrose Finnegan. At the kitchen table, I learned. My ears to say... My ears to say, Joey, nobody's better than you, but you're no better than anybody else. Maybe it's the Scranton and you got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yeah, I don't I don't thank you for I, that. I don't think he that went to Yale. That made my day. Yeah. <laughs> I could listen to him all day. He went he went to the University of Delaware. And, oh yeah. And, that, and that explains. That's about right. <laughs> that's where he got his BA and then Syracuse University he got a He said JD. he was at the top of his class. That's what I heard, dude. Yeah. But I, I then they heard, found out it was wrong. I heard he was actually near the bottom of his yes. class. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I yeah, I heard they found that on a laptop. Oh <laughs> yeah. His yeah. actual grades, yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, Skull and Bones, they're also known as the Order, uh, Order three two two, the Brotherhood of Death, or simply Bones. Okay. Yep. People on the Yale campus, they will refer to them just as Bones, the bones. most of the time. And do you think you think if you're just walking around, you know, or is there any uniform they wear, or is, is there something they wear on their sleeve? Oh, that guy's a bones. I don't think so. Not publicly, because they want to be secret. Yes, they don't want them to know. Yeah. Okay. H- have you seen their tomb? I think I have. It's I, huge, that's where dude. they meet. Yeah. Right. They meet inside this tomb. Yeah, and it's big. It's really big, and it has a courtyard, and. Uh, a bunch of crazy stuff supposedly happens in there, which I'm sure we'll get into. But uh, before we get into that, it's worth noting that Skull and Bones is part of what is called the Big Three at Yale. Um, the other, what does that mean? The, the Big Three secret societies on campus. Oh, there's there's, there's two, two others. others. Okay. The other two being Scroll and Key and Wolf's Head. Ooh, I like Wolf's Head. Scroll and Key. Scroll and Key. Yep. Like the shapeshifters, the scrolls. The scrolls. Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned the Russell Trust Association, right? Um, At the beginning. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So the alumni. Russell. I forgot what his name was. Yeah. The Alumni Association for the Skull and Bones is known as the Russell Trust Association. So like what their legal entity is known, it's the Russell Trust Association. And it oversees membership and controls the real estate portfolio and all of the assets for Skull and Bones, uh, including Deer Island. Um, which is a 40-acre island with what? a lodge on it, and it's, wow. one, it's one of the Thousand Islands. Have you heard of the Thousand Islands? Yes. No. It's oh, you mean like the dressing? The, the dressing. Yes, exactly. That. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mayonnaise and mustard. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, gotcha. yep. It's named after these islands, and those islands exist. Between, Are you serious? Between the that United... That dressing? Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. 
You Keep learn. going. Yeah, so the Thousand Islands is in between the United States and Canada. There's about 1,800 of those islands, and they call them the Thousand Islands, even though there's more than 1,000. That's not interesting. I can't yeah. believe it. And you mentioned uh, one of the co-founders of Skull and Bones, William Huntington Russell. Yep. Right? He, alongside Alfonso Taft, who's the father of uh, President Taft, right? Yeah. Um, so... William Huntington Russell is the cousin of Samuel Russell, who's the founder of Russell and Company, which was heavily involved in the opium trade in China and other parts of the world. Chinese. And wow. if you are a longtime listener of this series, where have we heard the last name Russell before? Kurt. On our on our Illuminati episode. Oh, okay. I was about to say Kurt Russell. The, the, the was Illum- that one of the bloodlines? The Illuminati bloodline, the Russell bloodline. So in order to, you know, kind of tie this in, a lot of people are, you know, thinking that um, Skull and Bones is basically um, like the American chapter of the Illuminati because of that, Ooh, where okay. they induct new people and, you know. Maybe that's where they start. They get their marching orders from. Right. Because we were talking about how they communicate. Maybe this is the, like the start of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so it's important to understand these, you know, these secret societies and uh, the stuff that's going on in these supposed, like, just college. I guess they're not a fraternity anymore because they let women in now. But um, And Skull and Bones? Yeah, they do. What? Yeah. They're very, oh, I didn't know that. I think they got sued in 1991, and then now women can come. Yep. Really? That's weird. Women. I didn't know you could. Inclusive. White women. I, I think even people of color. Oh. Really? POCs, I was just saying, dude. that's probably who sued them, POCs, the white women. We should say POC. <laughs> POCs, dude. <laughs> oh, oh man. I, see, I thought it was still exclusive <clears throat> to it, men. It, yeah, it's exclusive to people at Yale, but yeah, women go. Yep. The thing is, if you don't get tapped, you're not getting in. Right. Right. Yep. So, what they prob- so why are they just don't tap women? That didn't sound right. Th- that would be controversial probably yeah and that'd be another lawsuit if they yeah well that's pro yeah and alex jones did a documentary where he like went to skull and bones and dude yeah he, are you kidding he's he's been to all of these yeah he went to skull and bones and he knocked on the door no one answered and then he was just out taking pictures with people it's like a 25 minute long little mini documentary he did and him and his camera crew were just like outside and they actually saw a woman walk in um and it was in 2021, so she was wearing a mask on her face. You can't really uh, <laughs> tell who she is. The mask. The masks, yep. And, uh, yeah, basically, it shows, like, the tomb, how big it is. And, like, on the double doors, there's, like, something you pull out, and then there's a keypad that you have to know the combo <laughs> to to get in. Yep. Oh, so they're modernized. Mm. Yeah. I'll bet you they used to use, like, this little, like, a stone thing where you'd have to turn it and push yeah. it in, and then you had to do something else. Yeah, but yeah. now they're like, they're all electronic now. Yeah. Yep. Fingerprint. cool. Yep, and there's only about around like 500 living members of Skull and Bones. So like you said, 15 a year get tapped and enter. And um, it's estimated that about 100 members are actively working towards the order's objectives, which we'll get into that shortly. Well, that's interesting because let's say you get out of school. You get out. You of graduate. School. Okay, yeah. You're you're done. Mm-hmm. Are you still part of the yeah. Skull and Bones Society? Yeah, you're, you're a Bonesman for life. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. For life. It like reminds it. me of the Kingsman. Oh yeah, what a good movie. Yeah, like you had to be recruited into that. To, um, and what are they doing? They're just protecting the Queen. Is that what's? Uh, go- I don't forget. I don't remember. <clears throat> They're a secret it, it, society? Yeah, the Kingsman. Okay. A you, fake you one for a movie? movie? I never saw that movie. You guys oh, yeah, reference a lot good. of movies that <laughs> I have never seen. We need to go we need to do a movie night. Just a movie night where you yeah. catch me up on all these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should. Here this is interesting here. One suggestion is that the Skull and Bones represent an oath of mortality that recruits are sworn to keep silent while the numbers represent the year and in the initial two founders. Other, perhaps far fetched theories have included that the skull is an illusion. No, that's not right. What is that word? Illusion. Is that well? That's that's not spelled right. No, you spell that with an a. Oh, there's there's two, two spe- different ways. Okay, two. The illusion is like allude. What is this? Illusion. Allude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's spelled a l l u s i o n. Yeah, you could say that the skull is alluding to. Alluding. Thank you. This this guy right. He's he's above me. He's too far. 
Uh, to the famed head of Baphomet, which we talked about last week, the Baphomet symbol. Yep. With the uh, alleged idolized by the Knights Templar, while the bones represent the shape of the cross upon which Roman Emperor Constantine was crucified upon. So, so be- they're kind of talking about the, their symbol. Wow. Okay. So um, people say that's far-fetched. Yeah, but okay. I, I bet that's right on the money. Yeah, whenever it's far-fetched, it's usually right on the money. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get a thumbnail for this one because we've talked about before there. Their uh, symbols and logos are just amazing. So skull and bones is going to be just right up my alley for yeah skull for and crossbones with yeah. three two two under it three two two three, and the two, skull two. and bones hall is referred to as you, what you said the tomb and bears considerable uh, Egyptian and Greek influence upon it, upon its um, facade 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 I'm yep. done. <laughs> oh, entrance to the tomb is strictly forbidden to non-members. Although it has been referred to something like a German beer hall. Well, that's bizarre. I haven't, so, I haven't been to one of those. I though. haven't either. Sign me up. Yeah, it does sound kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it's got bizarre passageways. Uh, it's got statues of knights in armor, a mysterious chamber uh, replete with candles, coffins, skeletons, chopping block, bats, and basin contained with red fluid. Uh, in this chamber, candidates have, have been known to be uh, divested of Metal jewelry, which that's a trait with, with Masonic initiations, where they're placed into a coffin, chanted over and reborn again into a society where they're given a robe embroidered with arcane symbols. A bone with the candidate's name is engraved and then thrown into a heap of other bones, symbolizing his or her. Um, wait, his or her. Yeah, I told you, girl. Yeah, right here. Dude. Yale became a co-ed campus in 1969. Oh, that, that's further back than I thought. Although Skull and Bones Society refused to accept female members until Lawsuit 91, which you talked about. Um, the candidate is then given a secret name, often of mythological or historical or literal importance. Examples being Hamlet, Thor, Shakespeare, Sancho, Sancho, Sancho Panza, Baal, which that's the devil, Magog, Magog, that's yep. where that's where uh, Armageddon's going to happen. I've heard that one is reserved for... The one who has the longest sexual history, because you know they have to talk about that when they're getting inducted. Wait, yeah, they're also expected to complete a detailed two night description of his sexual activity and autobiography, fears and motivation so, at some point in the coming year, lending on all who are more incongruous, congruous appearance of the encounter group session to the already bizarre atmosphere. So, what name is. Is it attributed? Mag- Magog. 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 Yeah. That's the one given with the longest history? Yeah. I, I heard George H.W. Bush got that one when he was in there. George H. Are you really? Herbert Walker. Yep. What a what a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, he got that one. Wow. That's what I've heard. So he got the nickname Magog because he's had a long line of sexual activity. And has syphilis. Probably. Yeah, or the clap. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wait, is clap and the syphilis, is, is that the same? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, herpes! Yeah, that's, that's another <clears> one. Gift yeah, that keeps so, on giving. So pretty weird. Um, lot, a lot of weird stuff with the initiation. So kind of building off what you said about like the um, giving them basically like your sexual history and like your fears and failures and all that stuff. Um, I also read that like part of that humiliation ritual is that you actually lie naked in a <clears throat> stone coffin and masturbate while senior what? and elder bonesmen interrogate you for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yep. So they say they don't do that anymore. They they admit that that used to happen, but they're like, we don't do that anymore. I don't. I, okay. <clears throat> Let me just process this for a second. I'm in a stone coffin. Naked. Yeah. I'm the one masturbating. Yes. And I'm talking about all my sexual activity. Yeah. To the other people that stand around me. Yeah. Pro- probably in cloaks and robes. Yep. Chanting. Yep. Okay, I'm going to throw so, up. So do they do that and then t- maybe take pictures so they have some like... Ooh, it, evidence. It would not surprise me. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you got leverage over a president. Right. Yeah. And... Hey, Bush, remember that time he was in the coffin? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... Huh? What, I, think I want you to give me a trillion dollars to this country over here. 
Yeah, pretty much. I, I heard basically like kind of going along with what you're saying that the whole point of the um, initiation process is one, humiliation, and then two, just getting leverage over somebody. Mm. Um, and I've also heard that the initial initiation process uh, is also said to include elements of grave robbery and maybe a sense of necrophilia as grave, well. Grave, grave robbery. robbery. Grave robbery. Like I'm robbing like, like somebody's got jewelry on them. Is that robbing the cradle, kind of? It's well, it, no. It's digging up that's, remains of people, and that's taking, when you date young people. Robbing the cradle, yeah. And grave robbery is, is actually up digging up a grave. Grave robbery is like where, um, I believe it was George H. W. Bush's um, uh, skull and bones class that is responsible <laughs> for doing the grave robbery for the Apache leader Geronimo. <gasps> So they have. I've heard of this. They have Geronimo's skull. A lot of a lot of times in their photos, where they have like the skull sitting on the pillow in front of them, that's Geronimo's skull. And I mentioned necrophilia a second ago. I'm not sure if that's really the right word for it because I haven't heard that they have sex with dead bodies. But I've heard that they are forced to tongue kiss the skull no. of uh, Geronimo. Yeah. So they have to like put their tongue in the skull's mouth, which to me that's necrophilia. They have like a weird obsession with death and it's bizarre it is weird and wow. obviously very disrespectful to the dead person i've got to, you're i remember reading this when i was doing this i gotta find that um i would think with that i gotta geronimo, find that lawsuit there was a lawsuit let me find that, that a geronimo um skull that did be a lot because you know uh, Native Americans, they have a lot of ties to like spiritual rituals and stuff like that yeah and like that's that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. That's a big deal. Yep. Wow, I'm surprised it didn't get like cursed by the Native American spirits. Maybe I'll run across. I remember seeing that. I'm gonna. Run, oh, here did. it is. Here it is. Here it is. What? Um, about Geromino. Geromino. I love saying things weird. Oh, here it is. More serious criminal charges have been lodged against the group. Alleged grave robbing. Robbing was a regular initiation and a practice for candidates. Um, and that the group currently houses the remains, not just the skull, the remains of Geronimo. Yep. And it's widely held that the U.S. Senator and known bonesman Prescott Bush, which is the father and grandfather of future presidents George H.W. and George W. themselves are known to be skull members themselves. Formerly President Martin Van Buren and Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa, still others have lodged the allegations. You were just saying something. Your writing is stupid, dude. No, I, I think you missed a line there. So was responsible for the theft. So I said George H.W. Bush was responsible. It turns out Prescott Bush. So that's oh, my bad. Oh, wow. Okay. No, no, no. I was trying to figure that out because I didn't know that they, okay, they actually robbed his grave. Yes. Um. Okay, this is interesting here because we were talking about Kavanaugh earlier. Um, was he a member? No, no, because no. we were talking about, you know, Kavanaugh and Blasey Ford okay. and the whole rape thing. Others have lodged the allegations that rape and kidnapping are also commonplace for, uh, initi you know, initiation. And they are expected to undertake in order to prove their worthiness as well as, you know, being elite uh, future leaders in fields of politics and industry, placing themselves outside the confines of the law. Uh, rape is also a common place on campus to begin with. Um, w alleges one rape victim that said even, that even on Yale, you're going to find it, but with the Bonesmans, it's different. They th truly think they're above the law. With all the money that floats in and out of the tomb, you start to wonder, is that really the case? That's what a victim said that was raped. Yeah, I bet. I bet. They're above the law. I'm above, I bet all the money that they have, they can just flush it out and nothing ever happened. Well, sure. And yeah. then, um, yeah, like who's going to, plus if they have something over a victim's family. Right. Yep. And they, they try to lie and say that they're, you know, over the years they've run out of money. Like if you read the Wikipedia page, they're like, oh, you know, the, um, the Russell Trust Association only has a, you know, according to their IRS statement or whatever, they only have like three point nine million, but in the U.S. And, and they own an entire island. They own Deer Island. 
Like, are you telling me like that's not worth like quite they a bit own of money? deer? Yeah, like <laughs> I mean, I wonder if they rent that out for hunters. What Deer Island? Yeah, or is that I just there? Is it, I'm sure it's a hunting. It's club. got a lodge on it, and um, every Skull and Bones member has to go there. And um, they they say like, oh, you know, it's all run down now, but it used to have like tennis courts and all these nice things, and uh, now they're saying it's crap basically oh really i'm gonna look that up in a minute but they try and make it seem like you know yeah we're not we're struggling here guys yeah (laughs) another thing they don't tell is when you're in skull and bones and when you're about to graduate each skull and bones member is given um a pretty large sum of money from the russell trust association and they don't say exactly how much it is they say it's not enough to make you ultra wealthy but it's a very generous gift that they give you oh wow yeah, so. Um, this is interesting sign here. Me up. Yeah. <laughs> sign me up for the bones. But don't sign me up for all the... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is interesting here. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, whose links who were in the Illuminati as well, and Harry S. Truman, also a Freemason, was one of the leading advocates not only for the war against Germany, but also the construction of the atomic bomb. So you got these powerful men that are in these secret societies that end up doing some really horrific things on the planet. Um, Stimson's point man for the Pentagon was the for the Manhattan Project. Okay, he was a fellow Bonesman uh, named Har- Harvey Hollister Bundy. Bundy's two sons, William. I wonder if that's Ted Bundy's uh, relation. William and McGeorge both also notable members of Skull and Bones, went on to serve key roles in the CIA and Foreign Affairs Advisor to President Kennedy and Johnson during America's entrance to the Vietnam conflict. Not surprisingly, both also went to hold key roles key roles in the Corin <laughs> Council on the Foreign Relations. Wow. Yep. It's, like I said last week, it's a big web. Yeah. It's a giant club, and... Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I, I have something else here about it tying into another thing we talked about. Um, so it, it was President Taft, who is a bonesman, yeah, who actually was the one that took over the Bohemian Grove and turned it into an offshoot of Skull and Bones for the graduates to go to and to perform the same type of rituals that they performed in Skull and Bones. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Oh, wow. That is interesting. Yeah. And did you know? Like, So it, he's like tying all that what we did, the Skull and Bones, into the grove. The grove. Yeah. In front of the naked owl. Yes. And uh, wow. the all seeing naked owl. Yeah. Did yes. you guys know, like in the early 2000s, ABC News actually caught uh, one of the rituals that Skull and Bones was doing on camera? No. So, so, like, they have their tomb, and like over a big tomb wall on the other side of it is their courtyard. And they were able to, like, I don't know, climb a tree or something and get uh, footage of what was going on during one of their rituals. I'm not sure if it was, you know, an initiation one or whatever. You can see this uh, online. And, really? Yeah. And it's weird pull, what they're doing. Pull, pull it up. There. They're like screaming and um, basically you can describe it as satanic, masochistic, macabre, disgusting, whatever. Macabre. Macabre. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's online. Huh? It is online. It's in the um, Alex Jones confronts Skull and Bones. I don't. Um, you might be able to find it. I'm not sure. Yeah, this looks like it. Those eight old, definitely distinguished colleges that are known for their ivy-covered buildings and their sometimes superior attitudes to other colleges and universities, which often gets under Listen the skin of people sound. who went elsewhere. So old. Yeah. Yale University is 300 years old this year, and where you to visit its... ...of a secret society that's been around since 1832, well, whose members have gone on to be leaders of Wall Street and the White House the Senate, and the Supreme Court. Wow. They're sort of trying to scare the initiates, make them, uh, you know. Huh. Well, there it is. So, uh, for our listeners, I just went to Google and I typed in ABC Skull and Bones Ritual. And it's right there. They're, they're, somebody filmed. I wonder if that guy filmed it. So Yeah, so 2001 is when they got that. Um, That's 2001 footage? Yeah. No way. Yep. That is not. Yeah, they said Yale was 300 years old and Yale was founded in 1701, I think. So that footage looked like it was. It looked really old. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Maybe it was like just how they got it. Maybe they did some sort of weird screen. Hey, think about now how we have drone footage. Yeah. You could easily get this stuff. 
Yeah. Because it looked like that guy was climbing up a tree yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't think it's outside anymore. You yeah. can get a drone. Yeah, you have to you have to conceal it because yeah, it's, we it's, got it's, drones that can fly over. It's underground. Yeah, and that, that full clip, like if our listeners go check that out, they're like screaming at like the top of I just of their heard lungs. it. Somebody was screaming. Like I don't know how people didn't hear that and like call the police or something because it's, it's like blood curdling. Well, they probably think it's normal. I guess, yeah. They're like, oh, the bones are at it again. <laughs> or, or they like tip off the police, like the Skull and Bones members, like, yeah, we're going to be doing our ritual tonight. So yeah. if you get any calls. Oh, yeah. And they're like, damn, it's just the bones. It's just the bones. Yeah. And yeah, um, that's weird. One one of the things uh, I found in my research is there's a woman named Charlotte Iserbeet who <laughs> uh, exposed a lot of what we know today about Skull and Bones because her father and her grandfather were members of. And her father actually gave her his documents and told her everything when he was on his deathbed, told her everything about like what they were doing. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and that's documented. Yeah. Where's that at? Uh, if you just Google her name, uh, Charlotte Iserbeet, um, and that's I S E R B Y T. If you just type her in, uh, she was on the Alex Jones documentary and she has got some interviews that she's done on the on Iserbeet. The, yep. That's it. Oh, wait, that's it. Um, so yeah, like like I mentioned before, so it's I wonder if she eats beets. Probably, it's spelled differently, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <same. laughs> it, anyway, like I said before, it's believed that Skull and Bones is one of the main pillars of the uh, American Illuminati chapter, initiating new inductees into the ranks, where they will ultimately be groomed by the elite alumni network and submerged into these like weird. Occult rituals. <laughs> what? I He's yawn. I yawn. I try to go away from the microphone. I heard it, it in my ear. Yeah. It was so. <laughs> no. No. Skull and bones. No. Uh, it wasn't that. It was getting me no. down. I, We're boring, Jason. No, no, no. no. I, and I pulled away from the microphone. That was good stuff. To do that. My bad. It was the beats. Yep. So, yeah. Think the, of the deliberate dumbing down of America. I wonder if that's in there. Yeah, she talks she about that. that. She talks about that. So, yeah. So on his deathbed, he he just hey, here's what we did back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We well, you know, I had to lay in a coffin, masturbate, and then you know we raped people. Yeah. I. I oh, thanks he, a lot, Dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, he definitely told her a lot about like what their goals are and like what they don't talk about. Um, and. Basically, think about it as, like, a proving ground for, like, the Cabal's future leaders, you know? Because they do have, like, you know, these meetings and gatherings of alumni. So, yeah. bonesmen that have graduated and have since gone on to high office and major political positions. Very important people in the world. So, they get to brush elbows with these people at, you know, their Yeah, alumni all these events. social events, yeah. Yep. Have you ever seen, I've seen these awkward video, uh, awkward interviews. Somebody will ask, like, Bush. About the skull and bones and how his response is just awkward. Yeah, he's like, I can't. He's just kind of hushed about it and just kind of smiles yeah. halfway sideways. Right. Like I know what you're doing, dude. Yeah. Anyway, he did some humiliating stuff there. I guarantee it. So yeah. I'm sure he's not thrilled to talk about it, and I bet he's even kind of embarrassed that people, know, so many people, know about it. Yeah. Um, now that we're talking about it, and 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 I am a skull and bones guy, and everybody knows I had to lay in a coffin and masturbate. You know, I did that. Yeah. Right. Like a lot of people are. Why don't you just deny it if you don't want to be part of it? I wasn't part of Skull and Bones. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you deny it, and they'll kill you. Yeah, and yeah. your family, or you'll become like a someone. You can't deny it because they got they got pictures and photographs yeah. and video, and that taints the uh, the organization. Yeah, <sighs> and you know we've had we've had times in the past where John Kerry and George Bush were running against each other. Both of those guys are bonesmen. Wow. So bonesmen versus bonesmen. I didn't oh, know that. Well, look who won. The better of the bonesman. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The better of the bonesman. Could you say they were boning each other? <laughs> could we Could we say that they're boners? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we maybe. could. Yeah. It's your boneheads. Yeah. You can call them boners. I think they don't like that, though. <laughs> yeah. I can see why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a bunch of boneheads. I like that one. Yeah. Boneheads. Boneheads. Dude, yeah. So there's actually. Oh, my bit, gosh. There's actually. Um, I'm kind of disgusted right now. Let's keep going along with their goals. So there's actually been evidence that Skull and Bones actually helped finance. Hitler and Stalin through Wall Street. Yeah, I was just reading that. Did you find that too? Okay. Yeah, so like basically they were doing this in an attempt to assist with the spread of socialism. So they're very interested in all forms of socialism. 
the Bolshevik socialism that was coming out of Russia. That's Bolshevik. The welfare socialism that we have here in the United States and the Hitlerian or national socialism that um, were all largely financed by these international bankers in Wall Street. Very interesting stuff. That yeah, guess whose name came up with that? Who? David Rockefeller. Oh, yeah, of course. He loves it. I think he's actually on record saying that, like, Mao's China was, like, a worthwhile experiment. And, like, meanwhile, like, millions of people died under that. Jeez. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he's a sociopath. Um, and one of the other things that um, Charlotte Iserbeet exposed was... <laughs> that name I, gets I, me can't. every time. <laughs> Go ahead. Iserbeet. Yeah, so that... She also exposed that Skull and Bones were very interested in corrupting the American education system, uh, taking what? taking it away from the classical teachings that sought to create true intellectuals and, you know, bestow true intelligence on people. Oh my gosh! Look at today's education. Mm -hmm. Yes, where it originated from, and basically turning it into a way to control people. What do I mean by that? So Skull and Bones were very interested in the controlled conditioning experiments that were being conducted on animal models. And you can think of like the Pavlovian experiments, for example. Have you guys ever heard of that? The, like Pavlov's yep, dog? Yeah, Pavlov's dog, yep. Where he, ring, he ring, ring the bell. Yeah, He's, ring the bell, give the dog oh, a treat. Yes, 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 ring yes, the bell, yes. give the dog a treat. Now just ring the bell, no treat. And he starts saliva. And, and, yeah. and, and salivation happens. <laughs> there was an episode on The Office where um, Jim did that to Dwight with a, with a uh, Tic Tac. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen that one, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yep. That's a good one. Yeah. Yep. So basically they wanted to take these methods out of the laboratory and bring it into the classroom by getting it adopted by the leading American educators. And where did those educators come from? They come from these schools. They, they, yeah, they come from these schools. They come from these secret societies. So they basically infiltrated the American education system and dumbed us all down and control us. It, it makes perfect sense when you read about it and compare it to like what we see today. Are you, look, that that goes right in line with what I'm about to to read because what you're talking about is the education dumbing down. Yeah. Listen to this. Yale has influenced the CIA more than any other university. Mm -hmm. Ever. More than MIT, huh? Yes. Oh, wow. One CIA-operated project was notorious. Guess what it was? MKUltra. Mm -hmm. um, because they experimented in the 50s and 60s with, with psychological... Um, hallucinogenic drugs to see how they were going to react. Yale was behind that. And I'll guarantee you the bones were behind that. I guarantee it. Isolation chambers, brainwashing techniques, psychological manipulation, control. So that, I mean, that's, wow. Mind control. Mm -hmm. It's more powerful. And that was under, that was under uh, Prescott and Bush. Is he was doing that under, Bush was, you know, Bush's grand, you know, the grandpa. That's Bush League. What's up with this, dude? <laughs> Isn't that weird, dude? Dude, I saw a... Um, that speak, is so weird. Speaking of MK Ultra and um, Mind Control, I just watched a documentary about um, this gentleman creating a cult where he brainwashed these um, college students. <clears throat> it's called Stolen Youth. It's on Hulu. It's very Stolen Youth? Yeah, it just came out like this week, and it's really good. Okay. I mean, he did a number on them. He made them believe these fantastical, like, um, made-up stories. Like somebody was chasing them, yeah. trying to kill them, and he made them believe that. He made them believe all these crazy things, and they would go crazy. And they would think that somebody's trying to get them. Where they would cry and, and, and just be terrified of the idea. Wow. And he kept That them. somebody was after him trying to kill him. That was one aspect. You know, the, and he would do things like, you know, what, what you do in torture where you keep them up all night. Yeah. Um, and he would, he, would make, he would make this other story up that um, these students were trying to poison him. And, it, and it's crazy, dude. It, it's crazy how you can be manipulated and brainwashed to that degree. Yeah. Where one of the students was, uh, going to be, was in school for her, her PhD to be a doctor. And uh, she was manipulated to the point where she couldn't leave, and she lost. She lost her own identity. It was. It's wild. Whenever you guys get a chance. What, now is this a true story? It's a true story. True story. Yeah. 
Dude, Dude, yeah, it, it really blows my mind when you get into that stuff, the degree at which somebody can be, you know, influenced or, you know, mind controlled about something. Mm -hmm. Like you, you also recommended that one thing that I watched called The Push. Oh, did you watch that? I watched that. What did you think? I thought it was fantastic. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Right. Yeah. It basically what that is, it's it's like some the guy's like a magician, yes. or a magician or illusionist or some something like that. And he basically sets up this gigantic experiment where at the end they convince somebody to push somebody off of a building. To commit murder. Yeah. But it's a fake murder. But the person that's uh, participating doesn't know. They believe they committed murder. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. You c That's what I say. You can be so they, so how, was, was this a true story as well? This yeah. Is a true or is experience. this a story? This is yeah. an experiment. Yeah. It's, it's a real world experiment. There's a net there to catch the person that gets pushed. But the person who's being... So what? how they manipulated, they, do they tell them this is a bad person and... So he's going to do bad things. I'll give you like a high level. It's like yeah. an event that a charity is running and a whole bunch of things are like going wrong and they try to like make it run as smoothly as possible. It starts with like a small thing and it just gradually gets bigger and bigger. They ask them to do like one thing that's like slightly wrong, another thing that's slightly wrong, and it gets up to that point. And the reason they do that is because like, oh, it'll look bad on the charity or something like that. I can't remember all the details, but that's... Yeah, well, you, you need to watch it. I need to watch that. You need to watch it tonight. It's yeah. going to blow your mind. It's good. It's on Hulu? Uh, I think it's on Netflix. Netflix. It's on um, Netflix. Yeah, and they also convinced somebody at the very beginning, like before the experiment, they like a smaller experiment they're running, um, to steal a baby. <laughs> yes, I saw that. This yeah. And they what? stole the baby. Yeah, to steal a baby out of, you know, a coffee shop. And it was just over the phone. Yeah, it was over the phone wild so yeah people will just do people are so suggestible yeah we they are. are they really are and but and the first mistake is to think that you're not yeah that's your first mistake to, fe to think that oh no i can never be manipulated that's what i think no no that's your first mistake oh no that yes. means i'm gonna be manipulated yeah, you're easy i just got manipulated to watch this movie <laughs> in a way yeah. dang it we got you but yeah <clears throat> I mean, it's, um there are a lot more there's certain type of people that are a lot more uh, prone to be manipulated, but I think it, at at the grand scheme of thing, I think anybody to a certain point can be, yeah, to certain degrees. Oh, he's a mentalist. A mentalist. Oh, yeah. You're, gotcha. You, hey, when you watch that, it's it's gonna be mental. Okay. Yeah. No, um, oh, okay. I gotta watch that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's wild. But yeah, so we sidetracked. Oh, that's all right. Hey, it's, we're all talking about skull and bones. Yeah, it's, it's manipulation. It's in alignment with, you know, some of the themes that we're talking about here, about how it, it ties into the CIA, it ties into the Department of Education, and, like, basically anything bad that we're, we talk about in society, it all traces <laughs> back to these groups. I know. You know these, this, this tiny big group web. of people that are trying to, you know, get their agenda through. I wish we, you know, and we're not part of the web. We're just talking about these groups that we have no access to. Or are we? Well, I hope not. I hope I'm not. not. I'm not a member. I'm not a member, and I'm not suicidal. Yep. I'm not uh, a member, but, I mean, if the price is right. Oh, <laughs> man. I, you know what would be cool if we could get actual a person that is in one group. of these groups on the show? To I anonymously call in? Yeah. yeah. Or either that or in studio. I don't want them knowing where we are. That's true. There was a Bonesman on Reddit that was like, I am a Bonesman. Ask me anything. I want to talk. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. So there's have a Reddit Q&A. Have you heard of those Ask Me Anything? No. Where it'll be like, you know, I'm I'm Bill Gates. Ask me anything. And, you know, things like that. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just chat GBT. Yep. Yeah, at this it point, you know <laughs> what? The, at this point, because um, we're talking about it. We're talking. The whole, the, the whole thing that we, weirds me out that I didn't know was laying in a coffin and masturbating. Yeah, you're really tied up on that. I, well, I, I didn't know it happened, and now I'm freaked out wait, wait, because wait, wait. they do that. Okay, wait, so wait, so we went over other secret society groups that drink <laughs> adrenochrome, and you're stripped over about the coffee. The guys laying naked in a stone tablet, that masturbation. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm just, dude. So, so if, if we already know this, what's the big deal in somebody going, "Hey, did y'all lay naked in a in a stone casket and masturbate?" We already know this stuff. What else can we ask them that we shouldn't know? I mean, your your craziest imagination is probably not even close to touching what they have done. Behind really? Yeah. Dude. Were so, you ordered to kill a family? Absolutely. 
Probably. Let's the, let's go ahead. Well, that's a question that like, should be asked. Like you talked about this, it says kidnapping even. So maybe they go and kidnap oh, right. a kid, and then what happens to that? Kid? Ransom. Are they are they now in an adrenochrome ritual somewhere? Right now you're on Epstein Island. Yeah, you just give it to one of the you know elders of Skull and Bones. They're like, oh yeah, thanks for doing that kidnapping. You've proven your loyalty. We'll go return the kid to the parents. No, they don't. Well, they take the kid. We'll take it from here. Yeah, they take the kid to you know Epstein Island to meet a terrible fate. And, or uh, some, you know, trafficking, child trafficking or something. Yeah, so... Do you think a lot of Mo- uh, Bones members are on the list, on the on the roster for Epstein Island? For sure, dude. Yeah. Yeah. These people are all at Bohemian Grove. They're on all these places. And it starts with what we were talking about, with doing these little things. That's the foot in the door, you know? Dang amount of coffee. Like when we're talking about the push, you know, it starts with the little thing. <clears throat> it's all the way up to pushing someone off a building. Yep. It starts with laying naked in a uh, stone <laughs> no, coffin. Yeah. Stone coffin, masturbating. masturbating in front of other people. And it ends with you drinking children's blood <laughs> at a Luciferian ritual. And then you're invited to play on the Super Bowl halftime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, or, or do some kind of Grammy thing. Oh, yeah, Sam Smith. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It all, it all goes back. To, it, it's just, hey, do all this stuff. Yeah. Start small, gets big. <clears throat> and yeah, we see where it goes, and we need to pray for judgment. We, we've talked about it over this entire series. God, I'm ready. Wipe this planet out. I mean, I'm ready it. for the new one. Uh, he's done it before. Well, yeah, he's going to do it again. This time with fire. Yeah, brimstone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I said I won't do it with water anymore, but <laughs> I didn't say I wasn't going to do it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's going to be with fire. Yeah, there's there's so much darkness with all this stuff, dude. So like if. If you believe that people can be divinely inspired to do something, on that same coin, the opposite side, people can Surely. be, you know, yeah. Luciferic, you know, inspired. To Dude, do. okay. That, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a quote I just heard from a trailer from Indiana Jones' new movie. Oh, yeah. Which kind of ties what you just said. Okay. Indy, Indy said, I, I've seen a lot of stuff over, my, over the years I've been doing this. I'm, he said, I don't believe in magic. I don't believe in superstitious but I've seen some things that's made me question what, you know, what's going on. And he said, I know this for sure. It's not what you believe. It's how hard you believe it. Hmm. Okay. Which wow. ties in with what you just said. Okay. Yeah. I could it's see how it. hard you believe it. Cause you said anything on the divine, you could flip the coin and do the other thing. It's how hard you believe what you believe. Yeah. Wow. Is what, is what you're going to do. Truth. Wow. 100%. Wow. He's just, he's, yeah, he's hit with a truth bomb. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, He had a Andy. grenade. He went, Boo. Thanks, it. Wow, I'm all over today. There that it is. Nice. There, there it is. <laughs> that was good timing. <laughs> that was awesome. That was pretty awesome. Oh, my God. It was like he threw an invisible grenade I right did. there. He, he did. Grenade. And he actually, if y'all could see his face, he went <laughs> like that. Yeah. That's while true. it was happening. I had to amazing. make up for the yawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. My bad. So this is... It, it'll um, get you fired up when you read about absolutely. this stuff. It, it will. Check this out. Um, because, and I'm not sure if we're going to go through, um, we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about next week. Because I'm not sure. <laughs> it's kind of up in the air which one we're going to do next week. We've got to talk about it. But it's all too tempting to view Skull and Bones as a breeding ground for future recruits into the Illuminati or conversely more overt societies such as the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, or even the CIA. Yep. So that's what we're talking about. This web. This is where it starts. You're in Yale. You're fresh. You're impressionable. You've got all these ties to money, powerful people uh, in society, and you're in college. Here's where it's going to start. Here's where we pick people. It's almost like this is the start. Even though, even though we've we've went through. Years and years back in 1307, the Templars got destroyed, but they rose up again. <clears throat> this seems to be another way. Hey, let's be secret. Let's recruit some people, and we're going to put them out there. Yeah. Or there's CIA, Illuminati, trilateral, whatever. But this yeah. is where it starts. Yep. This is where we're going to pick them. Yeah. What do y'all think? And it, it, yeah, dude. I mean, it doesn't make me feel good that like a whole bunch of people that you know hold the reins of power throughout the world come from these you know Ivy League schools. People mm-hmm. are like, oh, those are just the best schools. <laughs> well, it's also weird that they have all this stuff going on, too, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Poison ivy. Yeah. For real. Look at that. <laughs> dude, do the bomb right there, dude. That was huge. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's talk members. This is Jason's favorite favorite um we gotta find favorite segment on favorite segment. It better not be George Lucas. It better not be George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not Morgan Stanley. An investment banker. That makes so much sense though. <laughs> Harold Stanley from uh Time Life magazine. Henry Luce. He's uh he's a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. Did not so all these are Bones members, okay? Yep. Um wait, Henry Luce was a, a New York Mets co founder and the uncle of George Bush, HW. Okay, George Herbert Walker Jr. is a member. Archibald McLeish. Dean Ritter. Wait a minute. That's a financial guy. I've seen his commercials. Dean Witter. Yeah, he's he's got like this financial brokerage firm. Okay. Uh, former senator and Heinz heir John Heinz. Okay, so of course we love the ketchup. Yeah, he's, he's ketchup a, and mustard. He's a billionaire. So for good sure. job with that Bones guy. Uh, Secretary, oh, you already said this. Secretary of State John Kerry. Yep, ran he, for, he ran was for running, president. Yeah, they were boning each other. Uh, <laughs> former Federal Reserve Chairman Pierre J. He's a co-founder of Council on Foreign Relations. Charles Seymour, publisher and creator of the Fortune 500. Russell S- Davin Seymour. Don't, Seymour, don't oh, I won't. see more butts. See more butts. Okay. Um, let's see. Wait, where was I? Seymour. Oh, Seymour was the creator of Fortune 500. Uh, Russell Davenport. He's a member of the uh, council relation. Former Senator John Patton, James Buckley, John Chaffee, Victor Ash. A lot of these people I don't know. Oh, Sears chairman, Edward Lampert, FedEx founder. Oh, no. Not FedEx. Dude, so this list is missing. There's been three presidents. I know. I don't know why this list is missing so, all these. So George Bush, George W. Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush. And his un- his grandfather. Yeah, Prescott Bush. Prescott. He, he, he was never president, though, I don't think. Uh, no, he wasn't. And um, uh, William Taft. William Taft. What about Nixon, though? Nixon, I don't think he was. Was he a bonesman? Long. I don't think so. Um, let's see. FedEx founder Frederick Wallace Smith, former U.S. Ambassador David Thorne, Winston Lord, Evan Galbraith, James Jeremiah Wadsworth, National Review founder William F. Buckley. Wow. Um, Cornell University co-founder Andrew Dixon White and U.S. Trust President Daniel Davidson. Cornell? Yeah, this, have you ever heard of it? Cornell? I have heard All of that. All right. Isn't yep. that a university? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the best university. So the co-founder of Cornell University is a bonesman. Wow. So what did what he... Are you te- yeah. <laughs> what are you teaching there? Yeah, what did he take over? He, the, you know, there's there's probably weird stuff going on there, too. I bet you every single Ivy League school has something weird like this. It's just... Skull, I'll guarantee skull it. Skull and Bones is just like the most, the no, most known yes. about. But... Dude, like, who knows what's going on in Scroll and Key and Wolf's Head? Like, they're they're probably just right. as weird, if if not weirder. Yeah, it, it's crazy, dude. And those are just the big three at Yale. Who knows what what else is going on? I wonder if they have like a secret society at community colleges. Maybe I don't think they're <laughs> going to have much influence though. They're they're not going to have a whole uh, you know private trust behind them with. Millions of dollars. No, maybe. and you probably don't have. I mean, why would somebody that is uh, tied to uh, powerful politics go into a community college? Right, right. that like, just doesn't happen. They would never. I mean, that's where I got my associate's degree. Yeah, at yeah. a community college. Yeah, I can assure you that no one related to the Illuminati was there with you. No. At, at community <laughs> they were not college. in the broadcasting school that I was in. They were not. No. What do you got? You got something uh, no, over there? You'd up, like doing some research Yeah, I was there. looking up uh, what uh, Ivy League uh, JFK went to, and he went to Harvard and Princeton. Okay. And I, I was just thinking, well, maybe he didn't get into a group, and maybe that's why he had so much disdain for it. Or maybe he knew what was going on. In I those, think he did. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, that's why they took him out. Yeah, and, then, and that's why he made that speech. And yeah. he knew what was going on with all those secret societies, and that's why he made that speech. Yeah. Wanted dismantling him. Yeah. And, and then they took him out. They yeah, out. he was an enemy of the CIA, Worried about too. where they can make next month's mortgage payment. Well, it is what it is because he is who he is. That's why it is what it is. He is who he is. What? Wow. Top God. of his class. Man. Just- <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what they said? Uh, I his, can't help his, um, <clears throat> his press secretary, she was talking. Jean Pierre? Yeah, Pierre. She, 
they asked they asked her about his communication skills, and she said he has the best communication skills in this White House. Ooh, oh my gosh! She's they said that this week. Yeah, that doesn't look good on them, does it? Wow. And then and then somebody stitched a whole bunch of videos like that. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I mean, she like said it. it's it's incredible. He's he's running the country. I don't I don't. Get he's it. gonna run again. I hope he. Runs I don't again. think he's running the country. Oh, f- oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm just saying he's the he's the he's the laughing stock. Everybody's he, he's the puppet that's put up there. I guess while we're on the topic, do do you think that this is like uh, Obama term three? I've heard that in some conspiracy yeah. circles. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard. Oh, you he can run again? No, no. This is this he's is, behind the scenes. Yeah, he's behind the scenes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yep. And if Michelle runs in the future, that'll be Obama term four and term yeah. five. Yeah. She'll win if she runs. It, she will it win. Just, she just, will um, win if she runs. Yeah. I don't know if anyone can beat her. I don't well, know. at this point, I, I have no faith in the... Um, in the system? In the system at all. Yeah. So um, it doesn't matter who gets in. I, no. They're gonna, I just think that they, they will put whoever they want in. And the direction of the country is going this way anyway, so it doesn't matter who you put in. It's, it's, it's on this track going down this path, whether it's Republican, Democrat, whatever. Now, Libertarian. I, here's what I can't figure out. I can't figure out... If the the Trump thing was an accident that they weren't prepared for, or they did it on purpose to, to create this huge division, I think it was an accident. I thing. don't. That's what I can't get yeah. my head around. I think it was an accident. I, I don't think you. It was. It was just so. Crazy. It, there's just so many people that was that laughed and said, "Oh, yeah. that'll never happen." Please, because at one point, Colbert was like, "Oh, please run, please, please," because yeah. this is going to be fun to watch. Right. And they had no idea that he was going to win. Right. Um, I think the person who called that he would win first was Ann Coulter, if you know who she is. Yeah, I know Ann. She said it really early on that he would win. Other than that, though, yeah, I think it was probably an accident. Yeah. I think they fully intended that Hillary Clinton would just destroy. Yeah. They thought that she would get, like, uh, you know, the women vote. Like, no woman is going to vote for Trump, right? That's what probably they thought. Yeah. But... Turns out, tons of them did. A ton of people don't really like Hillary Clinton. See, and I don't know if the if the accident was, hey, we always control these selections because you saw how it went mm-hmm. uh, the next term. Mm-hmm. That was just masterful. Yeah, the way they they did that. Right. It's like they You're, almost forgot. And went, oh, we didn't do all those things last time. That's why we. That's how we lost. So we need to make sure we shore this up right. and, and get the get the get the stuff because right. we were so confident that he was going to lose by the public. We didn't need to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That's what I think. Yeah, that's what I think. I agree, man. Yeah, it's sad. Skull and bones, dude. Yep. Well, <clears throat> so we got one more on the docket for Secret Societies, right? Yeah, next week will be our last uh, Secret Society installment. It's been fun. It has, it has been, been fun. fun. It's been uh, very eye-opening. Uh, very eye-opening. I think we've very all concerning. learned a lot. We yeah, have learned, we a lot. learned a lot. Um, so... Tune in next week because we're going to, I don't even know what we're going to do next week. We've got one on the docket, but we're kind of, we don't know kind of where we're going to land. Maybe I'll do an Instagram to let everybody know what we're going to come out with uh, next week. Okay. So at this point, I don't know. Uh, we were going to do the trial auto commission, but I don't know that it's so relatable to the Bilderberg group. I just, I'm not sure. So yeah, we'll find out next week. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and you can, uh, you can find out what we're going to do next week. If you're listening on YouTube and you like this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. And if you're listening on any other plat- platform out there, please follow and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode when we publish. If you did not like this episode, I thank you for listening this long. And tune in next week when you might hear Jason say, Coke is better than Pepsi. I don't believe that at all. What? <laughs> it is.